when I was born, I came out female. In February of 2017, I got my first shot of testosterone, and that was probably one of the best days. And then in April, I actually got hired to be the basketball coach at Lansing Community College. And by June, I had started to get a few whiskers, and I figured that I should probably tell the team. You know, I wanted to control that narrative. The first time I actually saw myself in the mirror when I had kind of changed, and it took my breath away. Because finally, what I was seeing on the outside matched who I always was. I do feel like my authentic self. Well, we're discussing the controversial topic of transgender athletes. Are laws that ban them from participating in women's sports fair? Now, LGBTQ plus activists uh, call it discriminatory. Uh, but science is showing us another way to look at this situation. I want to introduce Harvard professor Carol Hooven, who has been researching sex differences and testosterone in humans for over 20 years. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you. You've been listening to everything that we've been talking about so far. I just want to say, seeing that video, you saw me tear up because I'm so happy for you. Thank you. And the hormone, testosterone, is so powerful. And you are the perfect person to describe what it has done for you emotionally, psychologically, and physically. Mm -hmm. And it changed your body and your mind in ways that helped you feel more comfortable in the world, which is wonderful that we can do this for people now. The science, in my view, is clear that the sexes are separated in sports for a reason, and it's because males have natural and categorical advantages over females in terms of strength, speed, and power. And everyone can see this. It's obvious. So the question is then, well, are these advantages so significantly diminished after puberty in trans women who block testosterone that you remove those initial male advantages. And of course you don't, or at least the evidence, we have no evidence to show that that initial natural male advantage on average in highly trained athletes um, is removed. So the ethical issue is, well, wait a minute, and this gets me a little bit emotional, sorry, uh, because there are people who are suffering um, and you have to think about somebody like Riley being your child and how would you feel about her situation and someone like I have a 13-year-old boy. And it's heartbreaking to think that if he felt like he were trans and, and then he would be a she, I think as a mom, I would probably want him to be able to play on the, in the female category. So what do we do? Mm -hmm. um, and that's a conversation that we really need to have. And people who oppose uh, trans women in the female category need to be able to hear the argument from the sort of more compassionate, ethical side, in my view, just to listen. And you're, that's, I think that's what you're doing. Of course we should have this conversation. Right. Of course we shouldn't call each other bigots or unfair or cheaters. We're all here, I think, trying to do the right thing. And so I'm thrilled that you're having the conversation. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.